Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and I hope you guys have been following along on our Alaska journey because it's been awesome so far and it's about to get even better. Today we left Anchorage in the Kenai Peninsula area and we're heading north towards Fairbanks but along the way I stopped by a river because I heard there was some king salmon running and I got myself a nice one. Today I'm using roe as bait and there was a few other people using roe as well and some people using uh, spinners. So I get to the river and there's about probably about 10 people uh, fishing on the river and but everybody's fairly spaced out. Um, so I situate myself in between these two bushes because there's nobody there and I get into the water and I start casting. I'm using my Okuma 99 Guy Select Pro medium action along with the ITX 4000 also from Akuma and this is the perfect setup for this kind of fishing nice uh, bobber fishing on the river it's just the perfect length and the perfect size reel I'm using row on the hook and I'm just letting it drift slowly along the river downstream now, as I do same thing with steelhead and you can also use that technique for salmon as well and I know somebody's gonna ask so I'm gonna say it right now I'm using gloves because I'm using row and the row is really sticky on your fingers and it gets all over the rod all over the reel so the, the gloves kind of help so on my very third cast I'm reeling slowly and I see a little tick of the bobber and I just reel real quick and then boom I feel a fish on there. Mm, it's a fish on. I got one. And this fish doesn't feel too heavy at first, but then all of a sudden it turns and makes a run upstream. And big fish go upstream. So, and it just starts peeling line, and I'm tightening the drag. And then it peels even more line, just just keeps going. And I'm like, uh oh, there's other people fishing on my right side upstream. So I tell them, hey, I got a fish on over here. So so hopefully, you know, I don't tangle up with them and they can reel up their lines. And this fish just keeps going up, up, up. And I just go wait up, wait into the water a little bit more just to avoid that bush on my right. Because it's just gonna wrap me around there. And it keeps going up and I'm like, I gotta turn this guy. I gotta turn him. I'm trying to turn his head downstream and bring him back down. But it's fighting pretty good. So the whole time I'm like, oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. And finally I get him to kind of turn his head and it starts heading downstream. And it's coming down, it's coming down. Still fighting though. And at this point, it's getting pretty close to me. And I kind of see a little bit of the fish. I'm like, yep, that's a good one. And uh, I asked the guys on the river that were upstream, hey, anybody have a net? And they were kind of just laughed and uh, they were like, no, nobody's got a net. You're on your own there. And I was like, all right, no problem. It's all good. Uh, and then so I just work, work my way downstream a little bit along with the fish. And there's this little section that I can l probably land them. So I start kind of coaxing them towards, towards that, that shoreline, the river bank. Fish isn't giving up too easily. But eventually I'm able to bring them towards the shore and there's two big boulders and I get them right in between the boulders there and there's like a nice pool a river bank so I able to kind of just push them towards shore towards the bank and beach them grab it and boom there it is there you have it that's my first king salmon in Alaska so and it's a really good one and look at that hook set right in front of its mouth it wasn't going anywhere it was on Alright guys, check this out. We got it done so quick. This is about the third cast I think it was. 
and outside. I know you should, Jocelyn was just chilling in the van before uh, she could even see what I was doing and bam we hooked up on a nice king salmon there's been guys here that's been fishing for a couple hours with no bites but we got it done I'm gonna just gut this uh, because this one is a female and I can tell it's got a lot of row we're gonna make some ikura for sure so I'm gonna just take the row out put it in the uh, some containers and then we'll take it to our camp for tonight and we'll uh, fillet it over there it's pretty thick here we go there's the row yeah look how big this row is like the size of the row is so nice all right let's try to do this without losing any there we go there's one heck yeah oh this is so nice Heck yes. Oh, nice. That's oh, perfect. my gosh. That's so perfect. All right, I'll take the rest of the guts out. Oh, I'm so surprised that the meat is still like really bright orange. Yeah. Usually the females, they get pale because they put all their energy into producing the eggs. But this one is still really nice. Did she put a good fight? Yeah. Pretty decent. Almost took me up where all the other people are fishing. All right, let's get to filleting on this salmon. Look at this nice, uh, I measured it out, 34 inch salmon. And uh, I weighed it after I took the row out, took the guts out of the gills, and it was 12 pounds. So with everything in there, I probably have another three pounds, I would guess. So probably about 15 pounds. So I'm just gonna take the head off first. Now, too bad I'm not a halibut fishing soon, otherwise I would have, I would keep the head and use it for bait again and get a big, big uh, halibut. Just taking the head off, still got the collar. Today with this salmon, I'm going to try to do something special. I'm going to try to smoke it whole. No, not exactly whole, but butterflied. So in order for me to sort of butterfly this, we're gonna do reverse butterfly actually. So that's on, that's butterflying on the belly side. So in order to do that, do the like this. Come up here, and we're just basically gonna knock out the rib cage right here, all along there. And then we'll just follow that. But we're not gonna cut all the way. We just have to be careful to not cut the skin on the other side. So now we're gonna take out the whole spine here. In order to do that, I'm gonna slide my knife right below the spine on this side. And we're gonna cut through some bones here because we're cutting to, through the rib cage on this side. And be careful and try not to cut that meat there. Try to do it in less strokes. So it'll look better that way. So we're just gonna sort of saw but slice through. And all the way down to the tail and we're just gonna cut it off cut the entire tail off as well and we could take scrape all the meat off of this again but honestly there's not too much okay let's continue we're gonna try to take the rib cage off here I like that it's still like really vibrant orange even though it's been in the river for some time you can tell because it's kind of it was kind of colored up starting to have a little pink hue to it and uh, they get pretty red once they go up really high into the river. Go under. I'm gonna take the fin off as well. So I don't think we need that part. 
but you can tell this one came from the river because it's still it's starting to get real lean and um, you can see the meat right here is starting to really break apart um, very easily it's very fragile and that's you know they they start to deteriorate when they're in the rivers because they're especially these females they're putting all their energy into the row uh, producing the row Okay, well, there you have it, a reverse butterfly salmon that's still attached completely. There you go. It's the back side, the fin's still on there. That's all good. And then there's the front, or there's, there's the flesh. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to brine it. I'm going to make a little salt and sugar brine, real simple. I might put some chili flakes in there actually. And we're going to do a wet brine this time. And I have my bucket. <laughs> I have my bucket. I cleaned it out. I, I washed it out with soap and everything. So it's nice and clean in there. We're going to make a wet brine. Salt and sugar. Some chili flakes. And hopefully this whole piece fits inside of here. So I'm just going to try, try the bucket. Let's see if it fits. So it turns out the bucket is way too small. Could have seen that coming. So let's just, uh, we're going to make a brine inside of the Yeti. So I'm just going to measure with my hand. One hand full, two hands full. And let's go three. Three hands, no, let's go for four. And I'm using just uh, cane sugar. You can use brown sugar. Brown sugar would work well for this as well. But let's go, we're going to go five handfuls of sugar what was that three four five you usually want to go a little bit heavier on the sugar than the salt so let me do one more now i'm gonna add some water make sure everything's all dissolved and don't be afraid to taste your brine the brine should be salty, yet a little sweet. I think it needs a little bit more, a uh, little bit more salt. It needs to be salty to draw out, draw out the moisture. Once the ice dissolves, it's going to get a little diluted too. So we'll go to two and a half more. And we'll do another handful of sugar. I'm going to add a bit of chili flakes to this. A little spicy brine I think my spicy sweet salty brine is ready we'll just slide this whole entire thing in here oh yeah now that's perfect also what you could do is lay a paper towel on top to make sure if anything comes above the water it's it'll still be soaking in the brine and we're gonna let that sit overnight Never leave food outside while you're camping overnight. This is going in the van. Well, now it's the next morning and now we're gonna make this contraption that's gonna hold the salmon over the fire, over the smoke. And I'm thinking I'm gonna use this stick as the main stick. And I kind of like it because it's a little bit bowed and when you put it over the fire, it's gonna you know, hang it a little bit more over the smoke. Um, so I think this might work. The only hard part is going to be I got to split this wood right in half perfectly without messing up. So I think that's going to be the hardest part. And I have some other sticks here that I can break down into smaller pieces and put as my, my cross beams. And that will support uh, the salmon as well. Let's give it a shot. Right down the middle. Going well so far. I think that's pretty good. All right, let's take a look at our salmon. This is one heavy piece. 
of salmon. So hopefully this works. So the salmon looks good. Feels a little bit more firm now. And that's the idea with the salt to firm it up. Because these ones, once they get in the river, like I said, they get kind of mushy. So we're gonna put the salmon. So that's it right there. And then we'll put the cross beams and it'll support the flaps. So with these ones, I've wedged the, the stick in with the salmon. So it's kind of, it's pretty sturdy there. And with the one down here, uh, it's the one underneath is wedged in. So, and I'm just tying the ends with some fishing line. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. So I've made a hole right near the tail. And I just want to get keep it keep it up. Keep it from sliding down. So I'm gonna put that down like so. And I'm gonna tie around this line. Make sure <laughs> I just heard something in the bushes. Make sure there's no bears coming at me. Oh, not too bad. Take a look at that. Heck yeah, that's pretty good. Okay guys, I think this is gonna work. I think I'm just gonna put a little bit more chili flakes on here. And you know, this is my guitar. <laughs> Alright, check this out. It fits right in the grate. Oh yes. Oh yeah, bro. Oh yeah. And I think we're gonna pretty much have to let this smoke for the rest of the day. Okay guys, it's looking good. It's been about four and a half hours now and it's got, yeah, it's had constant smoke and the meat is starting to feel fairly firm. It's, it's uh, has a little softness to it still. The, the back, the skin is completely dry, nice and leathery. It's looking good, but I think it's still gonna need another couple hours. This meat right here, it's really thick. So it's gonna take a while for that smoke to penetrate. Man, if you guys thought Alaska was cold all the time, that's completely wrong. It's so hot right now. And I feel like it's hotter than the Bay Area. It's like 80 degrees at least. It is hot. All right, it's been at this position the whole time, but now I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna take this out. And I think I'll just put it like this. A little bit closer to the smoke. Since the wind is just blowing all the smoke away, this would make sure that it's still getting a lot of smoke and it's not too hot in there there's no fire at all it's just smoking so it's perfect I'm gonna flip this over oh let's see well it could go a little bit longer okay well what I was gonna do to finish it off before I finish it off Made a little whiskey honey glaze. So I think I'll just brush some of that on. And I think I'll just do one side of it. Let's see if we can flip this back over without breaking off. Looks good. We'll just let that go for maybe half an hour and it's done. We had a casualty. I saved most of it though. Alright guys, it's done. All right, let's cut this all off and reveal our salmon. So on this piece, I put the the stick between the the split one on the back side. And I think doing it on the on the um, on the meat side is better because that could happen if you do if you stick it on the back side. Get out of here, guys. 
Oh, sheesh, that looks good. This piece here. Oh my gosh, it's so oily. Mmm. <laughs> I think these collars are going to be delicious. This is literally so, so juicy still. Look at that. My gosh. It's dripping. It is dripping. Just take a look at this just falls apart smoked smoked so perfectly damn that's good <laughs> I like the chili flakes on there gives a nice little kick mmm <laughs> in the brine I think I could have either left it in the brine a little bit longer or made it a little bit saltier but it's really good because the thicker pieces don't have as much of that the brine flavor just that the belly piece the collars oh my gosh it's perfect mm. go ahead try it That piece is buttery. Mm -hmm. The this, texture is uh, different than... Like a regular hot smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is... It's like in between. Yeah, like an in between, pretty much. Mm. Oh, it is very oily. It's so fatty. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can feel the... Just the oil just coat my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Even though this fish is like coming up the river, it's still so... It's got so much fat. I would have expected that. Yeah, I'm guessing these fish are going really far up the river, so they have to have a lot of fat storage. Yeah. Oh. It's like a like a copper river king, Ew. which I want to get too, but we haven't had the chance to go for that copper oh. river king. Heard the season wasn't all that good for them. But... Ooh, drippy. Drippy, I know. <laughs> it's so it's so good. It's juicy. Mm. I know. Yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah, that was the collar piece. The collar was, was just. Nice. That's a nice piece. Mm -hmm. Oh right, one last thing. Ah, that was well worth it. Thank you guys for watching this episode. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe. And if you haven't seen the rest of our Alaskan adventures, check them out. But more to come on the next week on Taco Tuesday. See you guys. Peace.